Who is the best and worst water legendary in Fire Emblem Heroes? There's this one unit that's so insanely good, I'm convinced there must be some dev favoritism, and you will question why they made this unit so stupid. Today, we're ranking every single water legendary so you can figure out who you want on the legendary and mythic banners and which units are a waste of your precious, precious orbs. We're ranking everyone on how good they are in modes like Arena, Summoner Duels, and Aether Raids today. And most importantly, how well they'll age against the meta in the potential far future. Though I gave more importance to how well they perform in Arena specifically, because that's where you have to use them the most. You'll see me put a very high emphasis on support effects, because it's not only one of the few things that make a unit age the best, but it's also because, since you're forced to run legendaries in Arena anyway, you'd much rather have them benefit the team in more ways than one. And let me know in the comments below who's your pick for the best water legendary, and let's see what we agree and disagree on. Though I'm not factoring in Arena score, because then I would just have the oldest water legendary in last place. But even ignoring Arena scoring, it doesn't stop this one unit from making her way to the very bottom. In last place, we have Legendary Fjorm, aka the Forging Bonds Menace herself. She has Distant Counter, Penalty Neutralization, Conditional Damage Reflection, and uh, uh oh, that's it. She has three effects when we look at both her weapon and her special, and that's with the Refine by the way. And for comparison, Winter Byleth's special alone is better than all of Legendary Fjorm's kit combined. Her damage reduction from Ice Mirror 2 is actually just sad, because not only does she need to somehow activate her 2 cooldown special when she has no slang in her weapon, but she also only gets a damage reduction if the foe is ranged, which is pathetic when nowadays you can get better DR just by existing. It also suggests that you're supposed to use Fjorm like a ranged tank, but with how crazy nukes are today, you're never gonna live anything. Her kit is so horrible that you'd rather replace her kit entirely and give her arcanes, but even then, you'd be stuck in Dragonflower debt if you want her BST to match anyone else today. Not to mention, she's a melee infantry, which is one of the worst archetypes to be in. Every day that passes is a day that Fjorm gets worse and worse, and the only thing unique about her is how much she sucks. Then, we have Legendary Erika. She has Kanto too, which sounds super nice, but she might as well have Kanto 18, because the amount of spaces you can Kanto just doesn't matter when you can't deal damage to anything. She also gets special cooldown charge plus one per attack, speed based damage reduction, offensive no follow up, and some true damage, but the bigger issue is that she doesn't support the team at all, and she's also a calf, which is one of the worst unit types to be in arena, because all of the maps are designed to be as annoying as possible for calves to traverse. Being a melee cav is already a questionable archetype to be in, but even if you wanted a melee cav, I promise you that this Erika is one of the last ones you'd willingly run, and I can think of at least one other red sword cav I'd rather run instead. She doesn't do anything unique that you can't get from other skills, and she doesn't support her team at all, but to be honest, she can't help others if she can't even help herself. Both Fjorm and Erika are so bad that you're better off replacing their entire kit and their weapon, but even if you made them into the best infantry lance or sword cav you could, they're still not good archetypes to run anyways. These guys are going into D tier. Next up, we have Legendary Guinevere. Some of you might know that I'm a big fan of her, and by big fan, I mean I think she sucks, and she's one of the worst units ever made in Book 7. Legendary Guinevere sucks, not only because the role she's designed for is so niche, but she also just straight up fails to do her role in the first place, or is outright useless in many situations. She can support her team by healing them 7 HP, but healing is such an irrelevant support, and if I really did want healing, I'd much rather run Gatekeeper, or really, anyone else instead. Offensively, she's designed as a mage tanker, but in an age where even the best far saves can't survive the most powerful nukes today, why am I sending out legendary Guinevere? Even if you wanted an infantry mage tank that can support, you literally have Summary Ymir or Duo Asker, both of which are better in every single way, not only because they have better survivability, but they also support the team in more ways than Guinevere ever could. Unless she gets an amazing refine in like 10 years from now, I cannot think of a single meta reason you'd willingly run her. She doesn't do a lot, and what she does do isn't even that good, and she even struggles to do her one role when there's a bajillion units out there that can turn this Queen of Burn into the Queen of England. Next up, we have Legendary Ryoma. He has Null Follow-Up, Distant Counter, Iot's Shield, True Damage and Damage Reduction, but to be honest, when you look at the amount of effects you can get from skills and supports nowadays, Ryoma sucks in basically every single way from his weapon to his preference B skill. You'd get better results by getting rid of his kit completely, but he's this high because of how useful Soaring Guidance is and him being able to run things like Guard Bearing 4. Ryoma is just lucky that he happens to be a melee flyer, one of the best archetypes in the game right now. He can't kill anything, he will die to everything, and there's nothing unique really making Ryoma good. He's not doing much, and he's most useful when he's just waiting around, warming up the bench, but at least it's accurate to fates, because waiting around is what Ryoma does best. Finally, we have Legendary Sita. In my mind, she's just a legendary Ryoma that's blue with better BST, 
She has some nice things, like being effective against cavalry and armored units, she has offensive no follow-up, and she's built around using her vantage. But against the crazy broken units of today, her vantage is simply irrelevant. It doesn't matter who attacks first. If Sita is doing zero damage, and she can't kill, and she'll die in both player phase and enemy phase. I will say that I like that she comes with Kanto too, so maybe she can rally your ally and Kanto away. Not to mention, she also benefits from being a melee flyer, the best unit type you can be in Arena and arguably Fae right now. But her uniqueness and overall usability is only getting worse and worse as time goes on. And other than being a glorified rally bot with Guidance 4, I don't know what else you'd be doing with her that you can't do with another melee flyer. All of these guys can sorta of contribute to your team, but Guinevere sucks as a support, and Sita and Ryoma are only here because of their archetype. Into C tier they go. Next, we have Legendary Dimitri. This guy is built like a melee initiator that debuffs multiple enemies. And while that sounds pretty great, I actually only see him getting worse and worse over time with the effects that he already got in his refine. They gave him Atrocity 2 in his remix, which sounds nice at first, but then, as some kind of twisted joke, they made Barbarity literally one month later, which is so mean when Legendary Dimitri would have much rather gotten that instead. I'm actually valuing him more as a debuffer type unit rather than a combat unit because while he's arguably good at combat now, he's only getting worse and worse as time goes on and as power creep and skill creep gets crazier. Even as a debuffer though, they keep making better ones and you might want to run someone else instead of Dimitri anyways. Even if raid bosses rise up back in the meta, being a melee infantry is the most competitive unit type to be in Fae and it's only a matter of time before he gets outclassed there too. He gets things like Phantom Speed, Damage Reduction, and DR Piercing, which sounds good because it is, but even if you assume he'd instantly delete every unit he initiates on, I'd still put him this low. To be honest, I only see him getting worse and worse. Next up, we have Legendary Leaf. This guy is a ranged cavalry unit who nullifies guard, he's got true damage, he's a brave attacker on both player phase and enemy phase, and he has a sweep effect. It's kind of weird that his refine gave him true damage even when he uses an AoE special, when you know you're never going to use him with an AoE unless you want to take away the one thing that makes him unique. When you look at his sweep effect, it actually only happens when the player is using Leaf, and it's crazy how this is one of, if not the only time IS thought an effect was so good that they nerfed it so it couldn't be used by the AI. But whoever did the game balancing back then must have been fired years ago because we haven't seen that condition since and we've gotten much, much worse things now for the player and the AI to use. I put him here because he's a brave attacker with a preference special that turns him into a potential gale forcer. I value his ability to act again quite a bit, not to mention him being a dual phase brave attacker means he doesn't really mind his speed stat aging. Calves are only getting better and better and he's got tons of new skills to use and enjoy, but I think he'll actually get worse over time as he's already gotten his refine and as they make better ranged calves and better gale forcers, you might want to run someone else. Finally, we have Legendary Male Byleth. This guy used to be one of the best water legendaries, best mage nukers, and best support units in the game. He comes with an amazing preference special that pierces damage reduction. He gives out drive no follow-up support, and he makes sure that Fallen Edelgard is never coming back to her glory days. He did so much all at once while being the best at what he did, so it's crazy to see just how far he's fallen. In particular, he's fallen off because null follow-up has become so much more common and significantly easier to obtain. I actually think that Male Byleth is a great example on how an effect can become so valuable at one point, yet become so devalued later. At the time, his drive no follow-up support was amazing because we were in a meta where NFU was mandatory just to even use your speed stat, but it was only locked to infantries, yet Male Byleth was one of the few ways to get it on everyone, and he was incredibly valued for that reason. But as full no follow-up became one of the most common effects in the game through new skills, refines, or just units having it outright, his support fell off. And the worst part is that he only gives it out as a speed-based drive, which was fine at the time, but nowadays his support might as well be non-existent, and you better hope your 4-star Alphonse can outspeed these monsters if you're trying to give him null follow-up. I actually wonder if female Alir or Camilla will one day age just like male Byleth did, when we start getting more and more skills that offer DR piercing so easily, or if it becomes significantly easier to outsource so you don't need to waste space in your skill economy. As things are right now, Byleth is just an infantry mage nuker, and he's unusually good at it with his preference special that feels like it hasn't aged a day, and since he doesn't need any of the DR piercing B skills, he's one of the few infantry mages that can also take advantage of out of combat chip damage with a cultist strike. However, we're in an age where I'd rather have nukers with more mobility, or nukers that can offer even more support, and that's why he's down here. But he might get a great refine though, so who knows how good he'll really be in the future. All of these guys are just okay water legendaries that you can still use today, but they've all shown their age, and that's why they're going into B tier. Next up, we have, uh, uh, no one. 
these units we've talked about are so bad that there's a visible gap between them and the rest of the monsters that roam around in water season. The rest of the water legendaries are some of the most broken units in the game, and at the bottom of S tier, we have Legendary Camilla. Because of her, out of combat chip damage has never been more stupid. Who cares about damage reduction when you can just deal insane amounts of damage before your combat even begins? One of the worst parts is that if you're trying to kill her with a ranged unit on your player phase, then you still take out of combat chip damage, which is ridiculous! And one of the worst part is that, as things are right now, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And that's not even mentioning the fact that she comes with Kanto 1, because of course she does! And she also gets damage reduction, 7 HP healing, she nullifies guard, she has offensive no follow-up, and she inflicts sabotage just to push legendary male Robin even further out of the meta. And as if that still wasn't enough, she comes with one of the best support effects in the game at start of turn DR piercing to herself and the entire team. And this is giving it to anyone, regardless of your unit type. And she's also giving it to multiple people all at once. Legendary Camilla is now the best and only way to give DR piercing to more than one unit, unlike female Alir, who can only give it to her support partner. But figuring out how well Camilla will age actually depends on how IS handles both DR piercing and out of combat damage in the meta. If DR piercing becomes more and more common, which I think it will be, then her support matters less and less, and that's actually why I ranked her here. Just imagine a meta where DR piercing either becomes less relevant simply because damage reduction is less relevant, or it becomes so prevalent that Camilla's support isn't that rare anymore. I'm not saying this would definitely happen in the meta, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. DR piercing is becoming so common and so frequent that I can sort of see it becoming like the next null follow-up or Camilla aging just like male Byleth today, who both gave out an effect that used to be so good, but is now seen as less valuable because it's less rare. However, it's harder to predict exactly how out of combat chip damage would be countered in the meta, so it's tricky to say exactly how well Camilla will age, and I can see the arguments for putting her higher if the counter to out of combat chip damage never comes. I only put Camilla here because I value the units above her more in the long run, rather than Camilla herself being a bad unit. Even though it's unlikely, she still has the potential to age poorly as a support, and that's why I put her as number 4. Next up, we have Legendary Azura and Legendary Ninian. Legendary Azura ruled over Water Season and she was breaking the meta for a reason, and having a 3 movement dancer like Legendary Ninian makes her one of the best aging and most useful calves in the game. It's weird that there's only 2 dancer legendaries in Fey, and they made them both water legendaries, but I guess Water Season is the season of preference assist skills. I'm grouping both Azura and Ninian together because I consider them side grades to each other. Azura is a flyer if you wanted flying mobility, and she also gives extra movement to your allies, null panic, and soaring guidance support as well. While Ninian is a 3 movement dancer with her cav mobility, while also being able to act again after dancing, which is incredible for action economy and things like arena and summoner duels. Having an extra attacker after dancing feels like having a 5th or 6th unit on your team, which is insane. I was going back and forth on these for a long time on who was better, but I don't think one is universally considered more useful than the other and you'd be happy with either of these two as your dancer. Between the two, I might prefer Legendary Azura because she's a dancing flyer and because she gives extra movement to infantries and flyers, meaning if one day warping becomes hard countered in the meta, she's still benefiting your team in a way that nearly no one else can. But there's many situations where you'd actually rather get an extra attacker for your action economy, not to mention that cav units are currently getting better and better in the meta. Dancers are by far one of the best units you can have in this game, because their role is to be dancing, supporting, and giving your allies another action. At the end of the day, dancers age so well because they're as good as the rest of your team when they're letting them act again. No matter how old the unit is, being able to dance is as useful today as it was on day 1, and being able to do that in arena specifically has never been more useful. This is the mode where Kanto and dances are so valuable because you can't run positional assist skills if you're trying to score instead. These guys have only gotten better with Rock Slide and Firestorm Dance. There is no other Fire Emblem game where being a dancer is more useful than in Fae, where the maps are so tiny, and that's why I rank these two here. But although these two units have aged really well, there's just one other unit that seems to never die. In first place, we have one of the most stupid units ever made. A unit so good for so long that I don't understand why they made him so good. I present to you the best water legendary in the game, Legendary Krom. The king of water season has retaken his throne, and he's taken over every other mode in Fae while he's at it. To change fate is one of the most broken preference things they've ever put in this game. It makes me never want any other Krom alts ever again, and it all started with this guy. 
His reposition is insane in Arena, when you can't run any positional assists when you're forced to run rallies for scoring. But he's also insane in summoner duels, because he can still act again after he repo someone. He changed and redefined the meaning of action economy in Fae, and he's basically like a pseudo dancer that can move your allies with better kill power than every other dancer. Even if his reposition did nothing, his support would still be more than anything legendary Fjorm could possibly dream of, but then to change fate also gives him an insane level of stats that I don't know why they allowed it. In this age of support effects, he gets stronger and stronger with the more effects that he has. And the worst part is that there is absolutely no cap to the amount of stats he can have. And let's not forget that legendary male Robin reminded us all why stats are so good. It's weird that this guy ruled water season for literal years when he came out. And even at his worst, he was still good. If we ignore the two dancers, then Krom was arguably the best water legendary in the game before his refine, and yet they gave him an amazing refine to make him even better. He is so broken now, to the point that you're running legendary Krom over dual Krom in summoner duels. Let that sink in. We'd rather run this guy over dual Krom, an absolute menace of a unit, and one of the best duos we've ever gotten in the history of Fey. When Legendary Krom repo someone, his threat range becomes the largest in the game when he's a ranged unit that just moved 4 spaces right in front of you. He's also an infantry unit, meaning he can run the best skills in the game, and also he's effective against flying and armored units, because I guess someone at Intelligent Systems thought he just wasn't good enough without it. I have no idea why sometimes they turn out refined so bad like Legendary Edelgard, and sometimes they do stupid stuff like this. But Legendary Krom is my pick as the best water legendary, and he's definitely one of the best units in the game. These four units are legendaries that not only rule water season, but they rule multiple aspects of Fae, and they easily make up some of the best units ever made. But even though I think legendary Krom's amazing, I don't think he's as good as this other unit who I talked about in my book 7 banner tier list, which you can check out here if you're interested. Comment down below what you agreed and disagreed with, feel free to give this video a like only if you liked it, and I'll see you all real soon.